All right, welcome back, folks, to the I Am Type A America Qualifiers, game number two in this best of three underway. If you're just joining us on the cast, the guy down here in the bottom right currently leads 1-0. It's the purple Terran player for Complexity Gaming, QXC. Number right, uh, as the pink Zerg, it's Scarlet. So this will be interesting if QXC can actually exact his revenge. You know, the last qualifier for an IEM barely loses out to, Earth, to forces that possibly were outside of his control. Uh, this time around, he leads 1-0 just like he did last time. We'll see if he can repeat it, go for that 2-0, maybe knock her down to the loser's bracket. But regardless of how this series is going, I want to remind you guys there is, in fact, a loser's bracket. This is double elimination. So uh, if you type exclamation mark brackets in chat, it will, of course, bring up the bracket so you guys can see exactly what's going on, who is playing against whom. Uh, the winner of this series will go on to fight the winner of Hydra vs. Violet. Top half of the bracket looks like Xenocider has actually knocked out uh, Kelsar to the bottom bracket, so Xenocider goes to the semifinals, where he'll fight the winner of Pult vs. Masa. So shaping up to what could possibly be a ZVZ in the semifinals B and TVT in the semifinals A. Uh, but of course, if QXC wins this series, he'll have a TVZ to follow this up, as both Hydra and Violet are absolutely fantastic Zerg players. Yeah, and Hydra did beat Violet, so it'll be... Against Hydra. Oh, sorry, I just haven't refreshed, I guess. Yeah, so it just happened, but that's a, that will certainly be difficult. I actually forgot to uh, notice Hydra, I guess. I just looked at Violet, right? Um, but uh, it, it it obviously is, 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 the Zerg American is no longer Violet. He's replaced with Hydra. I guess uh, I, it's understandable. I mean, on one hand, you've got Hydra, then on the other hand, you got Violet and his abs and his selfies and his Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get it. I just remember uh, when we, when I'd seen Violet and and um, Select and all these other guys at MLG Anaheim. My first thoughts were like, man, these guys look like really mature. Like, like yeah. they should be like mob bosses, not StarCraft Two players. You if know. You guys have not seen them in like regular clothes. They dress dapper and they they look good. They're like, <laughs> anyways. Do you need a moment? Are you are you okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'm fine. I am mature, unlike someone here. Yeah, no, I am absolutely like 14 years old. Uh, but oh. looks like we got that guy um, unbanned from chat. 31587. I'm sorry, dude. Your name is crazy, but uh, welcome back. Welcome back to the world of the the chatty. Hopefully you don't get accidentally timed out again. Uh, our apologies on that, on that behalf. But uh, anyways, so Scarlet last game. We saw a lot of awkwardness. Uh, one really failed bailing attack. It's kind of hard to really fully classify as an all-in because she made drones instead of links to follow it, uh, follow it up, but um, that didn't go well for her. Followed up with that really late game engagement. Whereas QAC this game, oh boy, he's going for that third CC really quick. And if you're going to do this on one map, I guess Nimbus isn't a bad choice. You're going to have that really nice choke to cover two bases uh, outside your, uh, your main. But this third CC, if Scarlet actually pokes him with the Overlord and sees this, and QAC's trying to make sure she doesn't, but if she catches wind of this, it's this is when you want to do that all in. This is when you want to really de uh, dedicate and uh, try and punish QAC for going for a build like this. Yeah. What's well, funny is that more often, you know, people will say like, oh, Nimbus, great for 3CC because there's one ramp to cover two bases. And that's certainly true. It is helpful. But we actually, whenever an all in has come off the back of scouting a 3CC on this map, the Terran's own SimCity seems to screw him over more than anything else. Like the Roach Baneling attack gets in there because you just like, where do I put my bunkers? On any other map, I know to put my bunkers behind that big supply depot wall. On this map, question mark, like a bit to the left, a bit to the right, in between the barracks. These are placed in the barracks, they're almost always um, closer to the front, but we actually have QXC adding on one barracks, I guess, a little sooner. And another, wait. Well, yeah, that second rack's gonna be down really fast. That yeah, is a bit, that is a bit unconventional, but uh, perhaps this is for tech. Like we got the reactor coming down the first barracks because he's gonna want to be able to get that siege tank up, or sorry, not siege tank, part of millions up. Whereas this one maybe just be for the reactors and get stim out sooner. I mean, I don't know really you go for a faster banshee with this sort of build, but Scarlet is uh, sending quite a few links over right now, and sadly the wall's not gonna be down. But she's seen how relentless qc has been at trying to deny information. She knows there's something she needs to see. She just doesn't know what it is. Yeah, that's uh, that's the problem though. You don't know if it's Hellbats two base push or just regular old three CC. Is she gonna go? I'm I'm looking to see. Okay, so he will put on to the reactor. It is it doesn't need to be an earlier stim for a three CC build. So I mean that's it's cool. 
a little bit different. Yo, I was wondering why he was dedicating, by the way, QAC, that it's so much to chasing a Scarlet's Overlord over here, but that makes a little more sense, because that would have been the Overlord hovering here that would have come in and seen this third CC. But now we're kind of getting to that point where the time has passed. Even if this gets scouted, she doesn't really have that timing for that big Roach bailing all in anymore. Yeah, that's that's gone, and she's already chosen a lair as well. It is uh, going to be for a little bit faster. Muta is not the fastest, obviously, but just a little bit faster, which means that, you know, it, it is Nimbus. Uh, it is these spawn positions, but that natural always serves as a very, like, drop point. Warp Prism, Medivac drops, that's what you do. So if you consider that, you really want to stop them from going for that immediate two Medivac, pick up all the Marines that you have, and go straight towards the natural. And you can stop that by getting, well, early Muta's. Uh, and if you happen to actually catch them while they're doing it and get the two free medivacs, that's like the best thing that can happen. It is, uh, <laughs> you know, even though I am Terran, when you see those mutilists pick them off, you can't help but feel good for the Zerg player for like that one split second before you oh, remember like, that you're Terran and you're like, wow. Uh. Like gaming bombs? Like you're gonna be like, oh god, no, oh, painful, but also like, uh, that was cool. <laughs> see, that's, here's the thing though, this is where I think. This is what I would like to see more of in Legacy of the Void, right? This isn't balanced or anything, guys. Talk about the way banelings work versus, say, widow mines, right? Like, if you burrow banelings, it's really skill depending on whether those go off or not at all, whether you get good shots enough. Whereas widow mines are kind of more like random, a big yeah. gamble, and they always have been. So when you watch a Zerg player burrow widow mines, you you always feel like a little more hyped. You always, like, even subconscious, are just like, oh, can she do it? But widow mines are like, oh, that I think I got a good shot or it didn't. Whatever. I'm not on the edge of my seat. Sometimes the focus fire is amazing. Just, there's Jockey. a select, yeah, there are select folks like Jockshi who do actually focus fire wood mines, and they do actually make it infinitely more exciting doing so, but... I do. I feel like Legacy of is already done a pretty good job at that, though. Like, Ravager shots are hard to get off, so it's always like, oh my god, he's... Who can do this? Well, I just miss things with, like, nukes. Like, you have the nuke coming, it's the really big, like, oh my Ravager god. Ravager shots are, like, small nukes, Drifkin. <laughs> Yeah, well, they do come hailing from, a, raining from above, so I guess you're not too, and they uh, hurt. too far off on that. Uh, anyways, uh, we have exactly what I was talking about, by the way. So, score. Um, the videos, unfortunately, aren't going to be out in time for this, so I guess I miscalculated that, or maybe she chose to get her upgrades before the she's, spire. She's got banelings, though. I mean, this this will hurt a little bit, but this really shouldn't do too much damage. In fact, yeah, oh, 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 almost lose one of the medivacs. One more shot for the queen. Would have absolutely executed that. On the left side of the map, looks like the hellbats are going to transform. She tried to take another base very early. However, this fourth base may be in for a bit of trouble. If she can connect the banelings, these hellbats will die quickly. But do you really want to waste banelings on hellbats? No. <laughs> but she's gonna. Yeah, she has to. So I'm gonna, but she has to. Oh, oh, no. They, okay, yeah, that was... Yeah. That was unfortunate. That was a lot of inlays gone, but more are coming on the way, so here she has to get out of there. Alright, and Anita's... still uses Medivac that has 4 health, by the way. All it takes is like one queen accidentally walking forward, you lose like everything you just picked up in. Well, yes, you should probably repair that and or stop using it as his drop. It's back home now. Uh, Muta's are finally on the way, and they do seem a little more regular time than I thought they would be, so... I guess I was wrong on that one, but... Well, I actually really like this additional static defense coming down. Yeah. I yeah, feel like we, just is, don't, we don't see enough Zerg players invest in it. It is still Nimbus, so that is definitely a point that she has to deal with. And it's just, it's so useful to have those. Like, it's always going to be worth it, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, her fourth did get up. Those Hellbats, you know, they did soak up a lot of Banelings, but they did not kill the fourth. That's probably more important. Oh, the the map. Uh, do you snipe off the Medivac, though? One of the yeah. uh, one of the things here, guys, as far as the bets go, sorry, just as I forgot to read those out earlier, Scarlet has like twenty six thousand points bet on her. QC with like barely under six thousand, so yeah, uh, drop her in the natural. Drones are pulled back. A couple do die to the Marines. Uh, he did manage to evade this pretty decently, but with the spine cars down, the Marauders fall very quickly, and uh, Marines are going to get cleaned up. Scarlet holds this base no. quite nicely. You know what he did is that he actually went through like the uh, the, yeah, like the, this part. the left. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of wish he would have gone to switch to the main. <laughs> like that that seems been more... like that would have been more effective because he could have focused on the spire, could have picked off some drones there. Yeah, oh, well. goes to the one base with all of the static defense. <laughs> yeah, and I do want to note that he had four widow mines, which would have been cool because you imagine they get they park themselves in a great position, they catch those lings that are just flooding in, not my, not being microed. But on the other hand, if they don't do anything, that is four Widow Mines. And a lot of the times when you see a Terran lose and you're like, man, why are they losing? The army supply is even. It's because they don't have enough Widow Mines. They only have two or four. And as I look at the production tab right now, he's not really reproducing them that fast. Oh, there we go. He goes on that again. 
Well, QC doesn't quite have those drilling claws yet, so getting those aggressive wood mines are not going to be as easy. But setting up those retreat paths, setting up little points to fall back on, something definitely he's going to be thinking about. But Scarlet is very quick to respond uh, to these creep tumors getting cleaned up, putting possibly new ones down immediately. Yeah, there we go. Almost makes it seem not worth it for QC. I know, you, you burn like three scans, you kill so many tumors, this guy just goes and puts like two down and finish it, fixes everything. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Creep proceeding, please. She's one of the few players we actually see they do that on the regular though, where you are on the front line, you are immediately replacing them. Ooh, so everybody fired that baby! No! Oh, no. Okay, well, thank God for the mutalisks. Thank God for the overseers. <laughs> yeah, God. Would have been much, much worse. Um, her upgrades are going to finish now as well. I mean, QXC never, I guess he never really saw a point where he could push in, and there was a lot of creep, so definitely agree with laying low outside of the creep area. But now she, she's actually probably feeling very comfortable. You know, QXC is kind of forcing himself to a port, a point that she knows where he is, and she knows she'll always have creep spread to defend. And I'm very surprised that she's actually going to try and uh, take this attack here. Off of but you know what? But she's going to swap him. QC was not ready for this immediately. Does no. fall back with his Marines at the last second. We'll see if there's enough Banelings. There certainly looks like there is. The Meatless on top of this as well. Picks up the last couple of medevacs, and these Marines are dissipating. I don't know if that was... I think you know, she killed a lot of Thors, and most importantly, yeah, a lot of yeah. the little mines. I think that was going to be worth it, no matter how that went down, as long as the Mutas lived. Yeah, and most of them did. The Thors died too fast. It just, you know, I thought that she was going to be a little more passive, because she was in a position where she could be like, I know exactly where you are, let me get up to Hive and start my 3-3, but she decided to go for the attack, and it was, it was kind of like a wash, like both players come out of that with basically perfect TVZ supply, you know, Zerg up by about 15. <laughs> She's picking up a couple of the reinforcements. Still focusing on the Widow Mines. Not that Widow Mines are hard to produce or even that expensive, but you do have to remove those from play because the last thing you want to do is accidentally walk over three or four of them because you didn't realize that they were landing there. So uh, starting to push a little bit too far off of creeps. And Bailey's got some okay shots, but she pulls back immediately. And I mean, keep in mind, a lot of what Scarlet's doing, these are all fights off of creep. If she could take the same fights on creep, they go so much better for her. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she was feeling, um, you know frustrated, I don't know if it's the right word, that she couldn't expand the creep. You know, she was constantly replacing the one that were that were killed, but she wasn't really forcing anything more out, and she wanted an opportunity to Ooh, do so. Oh, the so. Banelings, the Banelings, the Where are they even going? That's way too many bands to attack I, a third. Well, I think she's going to try and bust through the depot. And, you know, I know, but even, like, like yeah, but it just seems like so much more of a commitment. It does, but at the same time, maybe just setting up for a second angle of attack and didn't realize the army was there. Uh, yeah, that could have been it, too. I mean, that, that is the thing. She's hit QXC on multiple angles. Uh, last game didn't go so well. <laughs> this game, she's been aiming for it as well. But uh, four medevacs, five medevacs aiming here towards this base. There's no Banelings at home. She's got to run back. There's a couple of Zerglings to buy sometime. The Queen falls immediately. These spine crawlers are actually doing a fantastic job there cleaning is a up the reason. drops. There's a reason. You usually don't see Doom Drops in TVZ, um, but I guess we'll get more into that a little bit later as uh, this is going to get cleaned up, but there is a main push going down the middle. It runs into all of her Banelings, though. What am I? It's absolutely useless here. Oh, she's going to waste a lot of Banelings on the stores to kill them, though. Picks up on those. Well, we'll see if the Medivacs can save them. I don't know. Not really that many Mutas, but it's not like Scarlet's relying on them at this point. She's on Hive Tech. She's got Adrenal Glands 3-3s three on the way. It's going to be so Banelings, so Zergling heavy from this point on. If she can get Ultralist out, maybe even a little bit better from that standpoint. But Banelings into the Thors. Ugh, I don't... Ugh. I don't think she wants to. Like, they keep getting uh, drawn in like magnets. <laughs> She's like, my hand, stop it. What are you possessed with, idiots? Gosh! You press the stop button, you press S, and you're like, well, hopefully they stop, and they don't. <laughs> in, uh, in Korea, the S on the keyboard actually stands for go, go, go. Yes. Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, QXC is still not in a horrible spot this game. His upgrades are on par where they need to be. She's mashed out now. Uh, Scarlet, that is, on the late game tech. But QXC has only barely gotten his fourth up. Last time we saw him riding, like, five bases, feeling so comfortable. The control on King Sejong was insane. But uh, not this time around. This time around, Scarlet's done a great job of counterattacking, fending off those drops. Again, big shots to the static defense. Uh, she tries to sneak a base a little bit over farther to the left. This does get discovered pretty quickly. I really liked it, though, when I first saw it. I was like... Yeah. Where else are you going to take a fifth? Definitely not where <laughs> UFC's entire army is. This didn't work last time, man. <laughs> I don't no, know. I don't. I don't like this at Look all. At this, I, everything gets focused on as soon as it comes out of the medevac. These spine cores are fantastic. She's gonna have to replace one or two of them, of course. She friendly fire from that one of mine actually kills and weakens up a lot of the marauders, even though it does take out the larva. But uh, she'll clean this up. This is a big chunk of supply for QXC. I guess the medevacs are gonna get out, which is surprising. With how many spore crawlers are yeah. there? Yeah. 
Um, but you know, Scarlet, you know, that's almost like she loses some drones that frees up supply and now she makes more ultras. Yeah, 82 drones is perfectly fine. Thanks for the favor. Her upgrades are all about to finish, ultras in the way. It's going to come to a point where like these big maps do kind of start to favor the Terran play or the, uh, the Zerg player. They're the ones that have Gitas and Lings. You know, they're going to be dying your fifth, not yeah. the... Uh, the opposite way and she has been consistent about creep spread you know she couldn't really push it out towards the middle towards qxc because he has been just staying there but she pushed out to the left and then around so she has been consistently creep spreading although not in a you know the best direction sense, yeah. well the uh the ultras by the way guys they don't have a kindness planning just yet it's all gonna finish up here in a second but uh one of the big things for this course is gonna be able to soak what it might hits really nicely it's gonna allow those banelings and zerglings to actually get some connections on top of the thors adrenal glands was a really big deal plus three melee with adrenal glands on thors with no armor these are gonna go down so quickly yeah and i didn't notice that was a plus three flyer attack that's yeah. pretty sick um you know if he does come to a situation where she she feels like she can't win out the game for some reason like she keeps on throwing armies into terran and the terran keeps winning uh mass mutas can still be a good strategy you know, get up to 30 and you just start to uh, kill their actual production. I know people don't do it anymore, but she was, you, you know, when it when it was done, she was one of the best. Well, you know, she stopped replacing the spine colors after they got picked up. It's a little unfortunate. This drop finally gets some damage. She took the third time with like the 15th medevac worth of drops and finally QC gets some real damage done. Uh, pushes on the left side of the map while this is going on. Scarlet did leave enough forces over. He gets a fungal growth on that army. He's going to force a fight out where perhaps QC doesn't want to take one. And these medevacs in here have got to be careful. Infested Terrans and fungal growth still available for Scarlet. More fungals going down. And, well, she's going to completely demolish this army. Yeah. There was, <laughs> there was an attempt by QC to snipe it with a couple of units, but she had defensive banelings there because of drops. So really just a whole mess of a situation for QXC. It, it almost looked kind of desperate. I think he's kind of like, you know, what do I do here? I can't push onto that creep. Well, folks, army supply is, uh, you know, surprisingly even. Uh, the overall supply is surprisingly Perfect. even. Like with the trades that have been going on in this game, with the good and the bad engagements for both sides, I'm shocked we're at where we are. Yeah, she is starting to commit a lot more to mutas. Uh, she goes up to 19, which uh, with oh. plus three she will be enough to go ahead and kill buildings. How does this sound of creeps for it to block this? Just barely, just barely. Stop! I really don't like these doom drops. Uh, we'll see if it works. Yeah, and that's starting to get that stack spin down. I actually, I don't like that base out of QXC. If we're gonna be real talking here for a moment, you. He's gonna get a nice snap on Scarlet's natural base, so it's gonna go down, but at this point she's got a lot of others, so this isn't the end of the game. Oh for her. no! My natural went down at 25 minutes? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't quite mined out either, but this base from QXC, okay, there's good and bad points to this. The good point is because it's so focused on the front line, it creates the focal point of all engagements from here on out, and because of this, he'll have a planetary fortress to aid his otherwise. You know, his army that would otherwise not have it. But Scarlet doesn't really care about this. She's moving oh, no! towards the Greater Spire. Uh, oh no! Uh, I believe the mutas kind of sucks, but I was gonna say she's moving towards the Greater Spire, Corruptors, Alt, uh, Broodlords. Like it's no longer gonna be about that muta game. No, yeah, you're probably right, but I, I just feel like hmm, the counterattack potential was there if she ever felt frustrated enough. And it's and she really isn't banking that much money anymore. Um, you know, she used up her bank just now, so everything that is lost is kind of hurting. QC playing this out very well, just as a side note to all of this, but I think with the Broodlord scout, this one gets a little bit hard. There's a lot of Thors, but there's no Vikings, there's no need for them. He's not scouted this coming at all. He's been so focused on that natural base for this, I don't know, majority of this game. He's yeah. finally building another expansion, by the way. Like, you'd think he was playing mech with this, uh, how slow he's been expanding. Yeah, I really, you know, I start things, things are starting to fall apart for Scarlet here. She's starting to run out of bases that are actually mining. Yeah. I mean, that natural is basically mined out, but uh, even that kind of hurts. And I don't know why she hasn't, you know, kept on expanding. Because there are two bases in the upper left that aren't going to be touched. Well, so Broodlord's on the way, and she's going to try and bide her time until those are all available. She's going to try and come attack with everything at once. we got some fungal growth going to lock this army in place for the Ultras. You know, Ultras are only shut down by the kiting mechanic. If you can't kite those Ultras, infested Terrans behind this. Soak the Widowmine shots. Even friendly fire a lot of the Marines, but does she have enough? Four Ultras with transfuses trying to clean up this army, trying to buy her time to get those Broodlords out, remaking Infestors behind this as well. That almost went terribly because the Thors are adding as like a wall yeah. there. Like four Thors was quite a lot, but she just pushed through eventually. Now the Broodlords are absolutely gonna like no way a QXC can keep this base. He has to start Vikings right now, and he yeah, does. That's... He only has one meta or one starport. I mean, sometimes we'll see the cause and effect where you stim underneath the Broodlords. 
But it's this air positioning that's going to be so good yeah. for Scarlet. These Marines can't get the range for it. Yeah. And I believe she kept most of the Infestors alive. Okay, four, five, still left yeah, over. Yeah, like she seven more after more. that, too, so... Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, so a very, you know, important part of her entire army, whether it is with Ultras or with Druid Lords, just make sure that the Vikings can't get on top of the Druid Lords. Nice they, they can't kite the Ultras. Shreds that army to pieces. Both she players are in that really expand. awkward economy, though. I agree, she needs to expand, she needs to get some better mining going on, she's a lot of idle drones as well, but I mean, at this point in the game, Qxy's not exactly in a better spot, the base he just took, he can't mine from, he's got a spam repair planet here for the rest of his life, he tries to take a base well, in the bottom left, but there's a zergling burrowed, knocking it out, or blocking it out. Yeah, that is true, she's gotta get in that perfect army, and it's like that perfect army from the zerg versus the potential, like, uh, durability of Terran. This has been a messy game, but this has been a fantastic game. Yeah. This drop is really nice. We'll take this one, the fr like the freshest base that she has. Pretty important so base fresh. too. This isn't this isn't something to scoff at. Uh, oh. This is a really important base. Now down to one base mining, kind of a little bit extra going at the natural, but oh man, this Yo. is where broodlords and infestors become a lot more important. Not like they were in the days of old, but free units, free energy, no longer having to waste lings and banelings. That's how Scarlet's going to get back into this game, if at all. That's true. That's true. These are those units that will survive and keep surviving. But I will. Like, I want to talk about like the fact that she doesn't have any more lings or banelings is also kind of getting rid of that whole, you know, Zerg is more mobile thing. Like QXC, knowing that he's facing Ultra Corruptor Broodlord, will probably start to think about expanding everywhere. Like those bottom left bases aren't going to be attacked, and I think wow. that's why she's getting like lings now at all. She's had lings and such blocking out so much of this for so long, but. I do worry about these Vikings. Uh, it's going to be a Viking versus Corruptor war, and the Corruptors are fully upgraded. The Vikings kind of have the, uh, no, no, no juice, you know? <laughs> they got one level vehicle plating, that's cool, but no no actual damage. So dealing with the Corruptors is going to be very, very difficult. Yeah, they, they, I mean, they're both, it's coming down to like, they both need to expand. <laughs> Scarlet needs to take all the bases in the top left. QXC, all the bases in the, in the bottom left. Um, both have an opportunity to do so. Uh, although QXC, I think, is more, you know, more scary with medevac drops than she yeah. is with her slow army. And that's the thing, it is going to be a slow army, because even on creep, it's not that fast, and she's going to push off creep at some point. Uh, she's had no scouting information, too, for a long time. She knows the space was taken only because, you know, she had noted that she brought a bailing or zergling down there earlier. But does the pressure go there, or do you, do you take it to QXC's uh, production? Do you try and cut him off at the head, so to speak? It's a tough call for both players. They're both kind of probably feeling a little bit frustrated right now, like, oh, I can't break yeah. into a Terran, oh, I can't break into a Zerg. But well, she's... Hey, can we just take a moment to, uh, no Sormos? Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, well, that, you know, funnily enough, that might be something that would be useful. <laughs> you know, know, they're both... Scarlet, Scarlet, she tried doing Sormos at, uh, was it, I Am Toronto, that didn't go so well. Yeah, that was unpracticed, and if she got Sormos now, they would be unpracticed too, but it's like, I wonder if there'd be any benefits to doing it, like, maybe they're great at defending, or... You know, as QXC tries to take these outlying bases, taking two swarm hosts there would be useful. I don't know. So these little burrowed zerglings uh, around the map. Greatest investment Scarlet could have possibly made. Because yeah. QXC, like, even if he just landed here for one minute, he could have mined off that with mules for one minute through, like, four or five orbitals. So it might not seem like a lot, but this block in this base is a pretty big deal. I feel like he's giving, like, Scarlet almost too much credit and not taking those bottom left bases like he probably expects since they're gonna be so like outlying that they're gonna die but she doesn't really have that many lanes um, yeah it's not so. that mobile either it's a real issue but oh, oh she how did that how did that hit the medivax yeah that was that's the moment where you're like that's bs blizzard please <laughs> <laughs> oh qxc going into the ravens I think it's How kind of again? necessary, but I don't know if he's got enough money or time to afford to right. do this. Because he doesn't have Corvid Reactor either, so no energy boost on those Ravens. Exactly, exactly. Oh, look it's at the stutter step. Yeah, sick Terran stutter step. <laughs> TBT hype! This is getting worse. Like, Scarlet did finally expand to one of those top left bases, you know? She oh. double expanded up there. She has defenses up there. You know, I mean, QXE only has two orbitals left at this point, too. Right. The QXC is going to lose out because he didn't expand at the point where he probably well, could have. I don't know if they, expanding aside, not being able to scan on creep anymore. Like, this is oh, going to start getting out of yeah. hand. Well, he's a raven. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Keep that raven alive. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a pretty high priority target. I don't think this is going to live for too long <laughs> with the uh, corruptors floating about. But hey, a small update on the brackets, guys. Looks like Pult did beat out Masa. And uh, I believe the. Uh, 
Yeah, Zeno Center Massa in the semifinals, the top half of the bracket. Hydro versus the winner of this series in the lower portion. But there's a loser's bracket. So I know it's been a long game, and maybe some of you have just tuned in the stream. Make sure you type exclamation mark brackets in the chat to uh, take a look for yourselves to see what's coming up. And of course, oh. our wonderful Ammon Farside is here to direct us. Oh, battle cruisers! No, he doesn't have the money to go mech. I don't think this is a good choice at all. Oh, oh the fungals. my god! Skylink is such oh, a sick fungal it's... on the Vikings. Holy there's there's no need to use the Corruptors to engage, but she's going to execute so many of these. And this, with no anti-air, gives free reign to the Broodlords. If the Marines try to stem underneath this, Fungals go down once again, and Ultralis is going to chop everything up. But Scarlet doesn't have a lot of Broodlords, so she does have to be kind of careful. She doesn't get too out of position, too overzealous with this push. But with 200 supply over 134, with QXC trying to transition to the most, the single most expensive thing he can do, I, I just don't see him with a lot of production behind this. Yeah, and Scarlet's starting to bank because she has maxed out, so these drops... Uh, replacing tech and hatcheries would have been hard before, but Scarlet, you know, this kills a spawning pool and invitation pit. She has that perfect army already. She'll take those two minutes to rebuild those production facilities, or um, tech facilities, I guess, on the other side of the map, and it won't be that much of a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm, what I'm loving really... Oh, okay, she's gonna finally give up on that. Uh, QXC still, though, constantly trying to split the map, trying to constantly be in one place on one side whoa, and whoa, whoa. completely across the map. Oh, the Vikings! Oh, oh my god! Oh, burrow them! She can burrow them! This is like the worst part! She didn't even burrow them! Oh, no! Now, luckily, she has the money to replace those, right? That's not the end of the world, but that was a lot of free infestors. Some of the most expensive units she could have given away! Jeez. The Christmas oh. spirit is real with Scarlet, and she donates <laughs> gifts to QXC. That was sick. That was that was sick. But it's so to get rid of the fact that she has a bank, and QXC is running out of bank. Oh, he no, finally the realizes. With the Cruppers. Okay, get it. Okay, there we go. Oh, right there. Um, he finally realizes he can expand towards the bottom left, but you know, at a time where Scarlet's finally starting to like realize she can't attack him, like I feel like she's gearing up very soon to do so. Look at the resources lost, by the way. How insane is that? Wow. Down in the bottom right, guys. So incredibly even the trading out that's been going on in this game, but yeah, the Broodlord's going to be sieging up this base best they can. Looks like uh, does finally QC take another base down here. But there's no mass mule drops. He doesn't have that many orbitals. Oh. God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Stimming Marauders into the Broodlords. This is like, oh, things will be all oh, over again. She oh, she only had no. seven more infestors. Oh. Can you? Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Realizes that she actually builds a lot more behind this, so not like she's forgotten and not like she's neglected, but I oh, like look. that she's not getting. Like, she could have charged into that, right? With her whole army, probably A moved into the force of it and killed it. But she doesn't know what QC does or doesn't have behind it. At this point, this is a lot like poker. You have to bluff with what you got. Scarlet doesn't know that QC's been so low on supply for like five minutes. And that's why she hasn't tried to overpower and win. At the same time, QC's been biding his time and slowly, slowly, slowly getting effective units behind this. But uh, another fungal growth comes down. He's gonna, whoa, whoa, she's whoa, just going to walk away. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Uh, 15 lings denied QXC's potential new base. And it's kind of like, you know, like, those things only started to look for those bases like the last... 30 seconds. That could have been a planetary already. That would have been no big deal. Ah, uh, QXC. Yeah, well. with, with no siege tanks, it's just nothing is on the investors. With no threat from this army, yeah, Fungal Growths go down as enemy chases into it. Broodlords are going to try and get focused. That's when the Ultras step into the fight. We have some oh, secret muscles going down. Scarlet's got to move into this. She runs into the opponent army trying to uh, friendly fire, but. It's not going to be the friendly fire that kills QXC, it's going to be Scarlet as she takes game number two, tying up the series 1-1.